and welcome back you wonderful people in today's video we're going to take a look on file upload using server actions in the next.js so let's jump right into it in the description below you'll see a link to this complimentary blog post article that's going to have all the required code snippets in the previous videos we completed updating our profile bio and in this video we're going to continue to work on file upload so scroll down to the section where we cover that and use it as reference as we continue through this video so once you get to the upload file in next.js using server actions let's jump right from here in vs code let's navigate to components custom and create a new file called imagepicker.tsx so if you don't have to build this component from scratch, I included the code snippet here for you. So go ahead and copy it. Once you paste in the component, this is basically responsible for users to be able to click in, select an image that they wanna upload and see the preview. Now that we have our image picker, let's go ahead and create an image form. You could scroll down here to the profile image form.tsx file, go ahead and copy the code snippet and let's navigate back to VS Code and under Component Custom Forms, let's create a new file and we're going to call it Profile Image Form.tsx. And let's go ahead and paste the code. And as you notice, we have some of the things commented out. And if you take a look to this code, we're following the standard patterns. If you've been following along with this tutorial, you should be very familiar of how you could use use form state to get your state from your server actions and how form works, where you have the form element, you pass your form action, which we will do, and everything else we have done before in the past. So I just wanted to, instead of having you watch me type stuff, just give you the snippet here. Now that we have our profile image form, let's navigate to our app dashboard under accounts, go to our page. Let's uncomment our profile image form that we just added. Let's delete the account page here. We know where we are and let's uncomment this out. Once this is done, when you navigate to your account page, you should see this image select. If you click on it, you're able to add an image. Currently nothing will happen if we click update image, but we're going to take a look on how to do this next. But first let's navigate to our strappy admin on the content builder and go ahead, click on user. We already have added our first name, last name and bio and credits. So now let's add a new field type and we're going to select media. We are going to call it image and we're going to make it a single media. Now go ahead to advanced settings and here we're going to deselect all and select just the images here. Click finish and save. Now going back to our content manager on the user, let's go ahead and add an image to our user. I'm gonna select this one and finish and save. Now let's navigate to our account page and see if we're getting back our image. Nice, now that we have an image, let's go ahead back to VS Code and we're going to navigate to our data folder under actions, go ahead, click on profile action. Now in our complimentary blog post, navigate to file upload with server action in Next.js section and for profile-action.ts file, go ahead and copy this code. And let's go ahead, replace it with the code snippet. And we'll scroll to the top here and we will come back to getting our file services here. Uh, currently, we did not create them, so don't worry about this. Let's close this update profile action because this is a previous action that we created. And so here, we're going to take a look at our upload profile image action. We've done actions in the past. We know that we could pass additional attributes using the bind method, which allows us to get it in our server action. That's how we're getting image ID. We know how to use form state to pass our state from our server action to our front end. And we know that we could get our form data when we submit our form. And what we're doing here in this action, we're first checking to make sure we have a logged in user. If so, we continue and we're getting our form data by converting it to an object first using object from entries. And now that we have access to our data, we are going to use Zot validation to validate our image. The one thing that I wanted to show you here is that we're doing something different. If I scroll here to the top, we have a couple of our constants. We want our max file size to be five megabytes and here the accepted file size. But if you take a look here in our image schema 
uh, object, we are using a new method called refine. If you're not familiar with it, I highly suggest that you check out the documentation. But basically here in Zod, it just says, it's a way to allow you to create custom validation logic, and you're able to do it using the refine method. And that's exactly what we're doing here. In the first refine uh, call, we're passing a function and we check if file size is zero or if the name is undefined. If we return false, it's gonna fail and gonna go ahead and, and show the user this error, which is please update or add a new image. Next, we're using refine to check for accepted image types, which we define here above. And finally, we are checking max file size because we don't want our users to upload images greater than five megabytes. And then we're using this to do our check. So inside of our code, we're using our image schema using safe parse, we're passing our image data. And then if we fail the validation, because we know this is a Zod error, we're going to go ahead and set our Zod errors with the errors that we get back. Once we validate the image, the next thing we do is we go ahead and we check had the user had a previous image that's uploaded with the same ID. So what I wanna do is I wanna replace the old image with a new image. So that way we're not filling up our space on our server with images that our users uploaded. Next, we're gonna go ahead and upload a new image to the media library first. And once the upload is successful, we're going to have access to the image ID. And finally, we're gonna use that image ID to make a second call to update our user profile with the image that we recently updated. And everything is okay, we're just gonna go ahead and return no errors and the updated data. So now we have to go ahead and create a new service that will handle delete and upload of our files. So in data under service, let's create a new file and we're gonna call it file service.ts. And the two services that we're going to import from our code snippet are based on our documentation. If you wanna learn more, you could go to Strapi's upload plugin documentation. If you scroll down, it's gonna show you uh, how to use them. But in our case, uh, we are we're gonna have a service that's gonna make a fetch request to this endpoint, passing the ID to delete an image, or we're going to make a fetch post request to this endpoint to upload. And if you scroll down, you'll find some examples. So if you take a look at the complimentary blog post, you're gonna see this code snippet. So go ahead and grab it, and let's go ahead and paste it in. If you scroll to the top, here we are making a basic fetch request to our using delete method passing our ID, and this is going to call our Strapi backend and delete the item with the following ID if it exists. And finally, in our file upload service, after we get the auth token, make sure we authenticate it. We go ahead, call the Strapi endpoint for upload. We're making a post request. And if you see here, there's nothing, anything special. We're making a regular fetch request. We're passing our token. We're making a post request and our form data. So once we have the file service, let's go back to profile actions, making sure that everything is imported. And now that everything is hooked up, the final change you have to do is navigate to your profile image form and let's uncomment all the previously commented items. We have our upload file image action, so make sure we're importing it. Let's go ahead and uncomment this. Here we're using the bind method that we already covered to add our ID. And here we're using use form state to get access to our uh, form state inside our action. And finally, the last thing we wanna do here, we just wanna add our action back and we're gonna pass our form action. And finally, if we scroll to the bottom here, we have our Zod and Strapi errors. So let's go ahead and comment. And that's using our form state to pass those errors that we define in our actions. So now that everything is hooked up, back in the Strapi admin under content manager, go to users. If you have a previous image, let's go ahead and just delete it for now. And finally under, and don't forget to save. And then finally under settings, go ahead to users permissions, roles authenticated. If you haven't already, make sure for uploads, you allow upload and destroy, click save. 
And once you go back here, I'm going to refresh. So currently we have no image. If I click update image, it's going to say, please update or add a new image. And it's going to show you the formats that specified. So we know our error handling is working. So I'm going to go ahead and click select an image. But this time I'm going to try to, to upload a different file, a GIF. When I click update, it's going to complain because it's only going to say, hey, only JPEGs, PNGs, and web file formats are available. So I'm going to switch it to something else and I'm going to pick a normal image that's supported. I'm going to click update our image. It's going to go ahead, save it, and update. So now if I go back to my Strapi backend, take a look on the content manager, on the users, you'll see newly updated image. So nice. Our application is taking shape. We finished our account where we able to update our bio and update our image. Next, we're going to focus on adding a form here on top which is going to be responsible to make a request to OpenAI, get a transcript for our YouTube video and give us a summary. So with that being said, I'll see you in the next video. And as always, thanks for watching.